Our overland journey continues thanks to a solid foundation from our Icon suspension. And the next step is to outfit our foreigner to be prepared for any situation. We headed home for Big Bear and then went back to LGE CTS to start the process and of course fix our front bumper. The front end of the 5th gen is pretty iconic with the styling, and it's one of the reasons we got one in the first place, so we wanted to keep that intact. Installing a steel front bumper and skid plate will help to protect the front end and provide more ground clearance. Victory 4x4's Blitz front bumper, like all of their accessories, are manufactured in-house in the USA with quality and functionality in mind. The cover was badly ripped, so we opted to get an OEM replacement that LGE sprayed to match. Once the lower center section is cut out of the bumper cover, it is test fit and removed to mount the light and the winch. We're also going to be replacing the factory fog light bulbs with new LED direct replacements from Southern Off-Road. One of the most notable styling differences of the TRD Pro version to the regular 4Runners is a much cleaner grille with no emblem. A 20 inch dual row E-Series light from Rigid Industries is going to take care of our spotlight. The Victory bumper is a perfect mounting point for a hefty winch. So we're installing Mile Marker's SEC 8 8,000 pound winch. And the general rule of thumb is to have a winch that is rated for one and a half times the weight of your vehicle. All the wiring for the solenoid to the winch and power and ground lines are ran. We offset the solenoid box in the center of the winch to ensure that we'd have enough clearance for the grill. On 4Runners, you're gonna to need to loosen and rotate up the front AC line to ensure plenty of clearance for the winch. Another multifunction form of protection is a pair of rock sliders from Victory 4x4. Steps only need to be able to hold up a person or two for a short period of time. Now sliders need to be able to hold up the entire weight of the vehicle. A smooth surface on the bottom of the rock sliders helps your vehicle to slide off and not get hung up on anything. Now the foreigner comes with a factory set of rails, but if you're going to be mounting lights, mounting a rooftop tent, or anything else, you're going to want something a little more sturdy. For us, the Gobi Rack was the only choice because of its stealth styling, it mounts only to the factory mounting locations ensuring that we don't have to drill into the roof at all, which might cause leaks down the line. The front air deflector is going to help reduce wind noise and is first test fit and marked off with tape so that the protective film strip can be laid down to help protect paint finish from rubbing while out on the road. Thanks to a mounting plate up top and clamping on the bottom of the hatch, the rear ladder is a no-drill installation as well.
we're going to be installing a Rotopax mount setup that can hold a water jug, gas jug, and any number of other accessories. Make sure to give it one extra turn just to ensure that it's on there securely. We threw a set of the quarter inch screw protectors on the back as well. A single row 40 inch SR series rigid LED light bar fits perfectly into the low riser on the Stealth Gobi Rack. For lighting on the side and the rear of the Forerunner, we're going to be installing two pairs of SRQ rigid lights. Another pair of these lights are going to be mounted directly to the tubing on either side of the roof rack to be used as scene lights. The wiring coming from the roof rack is then routed down the side channel of the windshield and ran through some heat shrink so that it can flushly and securely fit to the side of the windshield using some RTV silicone. We're going to be running everything into a trigger controller six shooter. Our two main light bars are going to be ran to the highest amperage fuses on the controller. A small bracket mounts the trigger controller to the inside of the inner fender using a pair of factory mounting holes. Once again, no drilling. Once the controller is wired to the battery for power, an ignition wire is ran into the fuse box to ensure that we won't have any power drains while the vehicle's off. Now rather than running a bunch of wires into the firewall to hook up to switches, the trigger controller uses RFID for its switch panel and can also be controlled using a Bluetooth phone app. We mounted the switch panel to the overhead console and tapped into the wiring to help power and charge the switch setup. Being able to easily access whatever you need on your vehicle is a key to overlanding. Rather than throwing a huge easy up in the back and taking up tons of unnecessary space, we opted to install an ARB awning onto the side of the Gobi rack. This also is going to help cover some of the wiring for the rigid lights. We're going to be mounting up a small 5 pound power tank to this more off road 400 bracket. And all you need to do to get the power tank set up in there is to flip their bracket around so you can reach the latch. Now one of the things that we learned on our first trip was that it takes quite a while to air tires back up using a small compressor. The power tank uses compressed CO2 to ensure high pressure on demand air. Having an overland rig versus a purpose-built off-road truck means pulling double duty as a daily driver and being able to go off the beaten path. We had a little road trip planned up to Havasu to do some filming and decided to take the opportunity to hit some trails along the way. So we're going to go left because left is right. With any build, with any journey, preparation is key. So we wanted to also scout out the location that we're going to be taking our first overland camping trip. We hit up Red Canyon Jeep Trail just off Scirocco Summit at the 10 Freeway. The area was home to iron ore mines and later a tank training ground ran by General Patton.
We ventured into the first leg of the trail and knew that we wanted to come back, explore more, and stay the night. But we needed to hit the road to make our destination in time, so we turned around and headed back up before airing up with our power tank. And we aired down to about 22 PSI, um, nothing crazy. Uh, we just wanted to kind of smooth the bumps out, make it a little bit easier on our uh, on ourselves and on our cameras. So we're gonna air back up with the power tank. This is the five pound tank uh, that we fits back here. And super, super quick. You can even run some air tools off of it. Um, but we're just gonna air back up and hit back on the highway. Always up for some scenic views, so our next stop was Parker Mountain. It's got a huge pee on it, you just can't miss it. Now, the winding road up is a bit of a climb as a maintenance road for the radio towers at the summit. It's mostly smooth, but four-wheel drive sure comes in handy on an easy climb up. What's great about having everything that you need mounted to the vehicle is that you can stop, set up some shade, and kick back no matter where you're at. The quiet scenery at sunset is great, but... I think it's time for some camping gear. As the sun began to set, it was time to see how much of the terrain our rigid lights would light up. Now 
the trigger controller app can not only control the lights and any other electronics that you may have hooked up, but you can also dim the lights and even turn them into flashers in case of an emergency or just to mess with your friends. From our drone shot, you can see the different spread that each light offers and what its purpose is. Using the two lights in combination gives you a wide spread and distance. So as we continue our overlanding journey, we're going to be outfitting everything that we need to camp on the vehicle.